Greetings everyone. Today on the bench I have a box to take a look at. I have a couple more of those amplifiers to review and we'll take a little break and look at this realistic portable cassette recorder. Of course realistic being a Radio Shack brand. CTR41. Some of the features here. A buck fifty. So, I have to wonder if this thing's going to work or not. Let's pop it open here. Yeah. So we have a pretty good condition looking cassette recorder. Looking this up in the catalogs, it was available from 77 or was it 78 all the way through 1982, so it was in the lineup for a while. This was the nicest recorder that Radio Shack carried of this style. I think they call this a shoebox style recorder. They had some other designs, but this was the top model of this style. Let's see here, it has a tape counter, condenser microphone, volume and tone switch, and the uh, power options there, and the auxiliary end along with the ear and mic and remote. Looks like somebody might have glued that. See, nothing on this side. This is pretty much an end of an era for this style. You know, they went with the slimmer models. You see how thick this one is? But in the 80s, they started going with a slimmer model. So this was, after 1982, this was it of these thicker design cassette recorders. So all some other stuff in here. Like a power cord. manual and a little note here oh isn't that nice oops I forgot to uh, shut off the air conditioner I don't like having it off too long, but it's just kind of noisy, so stand by. So yeah, it looks pretty clean. There are marks here. It's like melted into the plastic. And there's marks along the side here. What happens is these vinyl power cords have a plasticizer in them. And when you store things away and put it against it for a while the plasticizer leaches out and damages the other plastics that are sensitive to solvents so yeah when whenever you store something away don't don't stuff the power cord up against it or it might damage the plastic materials I once had a CD case and it was made of vinyl and I put it in some furniture and set it in there for a while. And when I went to get it, it was like stuck to it. it the plasticizers in the vinyl leached out and damaged the finish on the furniture. And it made like a glue and it kind of stuck it in there. Pretty much ruining the finish on the furniture. So, yeah, just be aware of that. Quick look at the manual here. These have the schematics in the manual. I'll just go right back here. Here's the specifications. And yep, they have schematics. 120 volt model, 
240 volt model. I think that's drawn wrong. See that output transistor? It's not the correct way around. See, this is the same schematic. There's just minor differences with the the uh, power transformer. How it's set up there. But it's a complementary push-pull output stage. And they just drew it wrong there, you can see. There's, uh, what do we have there? One, two, three, four, five, six transistors. AC record bias. The coil's there, that's nice. Well, without further ado, let's see if I can get this thing working. Get some batteries here. Uh oh, that don't look good. Of course, the foam is turned to dust. Polyurethane foams, they just break down over time. It's the thing with some plastics, they break down. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, the old battery acid, or not really acid, I guess, but uh, the old leakage. We always called it battery acid as a kid. Probably from car batteries that actually do use an acid. Where alkalines, as its namesake, is alkaline. But yeah, I have to clean this up. It looks pretty bad. Oh, people just don't store things with the batteries in it. It just makes a mess. So uh, yeah. I'll clean that up and come back okay cleaned it up quite a bit or at least a little bit I used this totally awesome window clean vinegar formula I don't have straight vinegar so that had to do so I'll take these nice quality sunbeam batteries heavy duty I wonder if they're really heavy duty. What are those? Zinc chloride and the standard ones are just carbon zinc. I wonder if these are really heavy duty or just carbon batteries. I don't know. But anyhow, pop those guys in there. See if this recorder will work. Kind of hard doing this through the viewfinder. So I'm going to put the camera down and pop this on. Well, it's still hard to do. Maybe I'm not doing it. Oh, I'm not doing it right. It slides in like, like that. If I'm in the shot or not. Like that. We'll flip it over and I notice that there is a tape in there. Let's see. Church service of 25 August 1991. Ah, I doubt that's copyrighted. Hey, we have some action here. I can hear the hiss when I turn up the volume. Wow and flutter. Whoa. Sorry about your ears. Just checking the torque. Ooh, 
Rewind might be slightly weak. It might need a belt. Come on, let's get to the sermon, if there is one. Maybe it's just music. I don't know. Okay. Let's turn this tape over. Is there anything? Yeah, there's nothing on this side. Maybe I can do a record test. See what's on this side. Yep, seems dead. So I'll reset the counter here. And testing one, two, three of the Radio Shack CTR41 realistic cassette recorder with tape counter, condenser mic, battery AC, coup review and all the other awesome stuff. Testing one, two, three of the Radio Shack CTR41 realistic cassette recorder with tape counter, condenser mic, battery AC, coup review, and all the other awesome stuff. Hey, this thing's working pretty good. And the condenser mic, it's one of the best sounding ones. Usually they have like a motor sound. You usually have to end up plugging in an external microphone to get the best sound, but you know, this sounds pretty quiet, this condenser microphone. Wouldn't be too fun if we didn't take a look inside, now would it? So as usual, there's plenty of metal. Though uh, some parts of it are plastic, they're kind of converting over, probably trying to save some weight. Nice size flywheel. Power transformer built in. 3.2 ohm speaker. Pretty decent size. They're trying to get some volume out of this thing. Look at that battery corrosion did. I noticed this as well. Looks like it had some service done to it. What's that date? 214.79, I guess that is. Resolder. Resoldered. So maybe something needed fix something became loose needed resoldered for some reason yeah seems to be in pretty good shape I'll have to clean all this out that battery leakage went everywhere okay got it all cleaned up and put back together then I decided to clean the heads and demagnetize the metal parts up here. It really wasn't that dirty. It seems to be a low hour unit. It's not a lot of marks and dust on it. So yeah, I think we got pretty lucky there with a working low hour unit. Too bad about the cord damage though. But anyhow, I decided to record some music into it. I found out it has a mixing feature when you use the auxiliary jack. It mixes the signal with the condenser microphone. So if you want to sing along or something. To defeat that, you have to plug a dummy plug into the microphone jack. So I did that, recorded some music, and uh, let me give you a sample here.
Okay, well, as usual with these, there's quite a bit of tape hiss, and you can hear some wow and flutter. But, yeah, you know, it's nothing too serious. It's not a hi-fi deck or anything. But it seems to be good for its purpose. So that'll do it for the realistic CTR41. Thanks for watching. And he's my little Woot. Snickers, you're my little Woot. Come here and look at the people so that people want to see the Snickers. Huh? Look up. He was sleeping. His voice is all raspy. He was trying to get some nappy in here. He's trying to nappulate.